this afternoon. Y'all are in for a treat. I've got the one and only Cameron Dorn here with me this afternoon. You know, I don't know how many of you know Cameron, but a lot of you do, and it probably doesn't surprise you that he's always into breaking records. So how are you doing today, Cameron? Doing well. <laughs> doing well, Ann. Thanks for having me on again. Well, it's great. So, um, hey, listen. What is this uh, Cameron Dorn and Fun Bunch Creations presents Project Grooming Leaders? What's this all about? Right, right. Well, that nice fly you have in front of you is where I've been passing out some businesses around town. Uh, came up with a project. I want to work towards getting a suitcase of courage, a nonprofit, so we can do fun stuff like this each year. So you can jump out of the suitcase and do amazing things. It's not me, somebody else, yes, right? Yes. Well, Fun Bunch Creations is a friend of mine from California. He's good at marketing and writing stuff up. That is not my forte. So he came up with that nice, pretty flyer in front yeah, of me. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. The Suitcase of Courage. That's it. And the Suitcase of Courage is something um, I believe in, and it's been around since 2008. I actually got it in the car. It's an old school leather suitcase. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, I carry it everywhere with me. I don't, I don't like rolling luggage. Right. I prefer just to hold this Suitcase of Courage. It's got actually Courage painted on the back of it. And I love what it embodies. You know, when you get tired, you just open up the suitcase of courage and it keeps giving. So. <laughs> you know, um, um, uh, this just sounds like a, a movie <laughs> that, or a story from a childhood story that you open up the suitcase and there's another chapter right. right there. That's right. There'll be plenty more. Yeah. So, um, let's see, last year you were in Ethiopia and, and around, we got we captured you and got you to sit down and talk to us about that. What have you been doing since then? I understand you're working with Fuji now. That's correct. Um, well, I came back and I was about to take a job out in Utah. And I got a call from a good friend of mine, a lady that's over PR there, and they needed a corporate wellness program design. Well, in the past I've kind of worked with a couple different companies in corporate wellness. And so it actually led to me creating my own company, The Suitcase of Courage, yes. LLC. Yeah, okay, there right? you go. Was hired by Fujifilm. Yes. And um, I'm currently training their trainers over there, about 14 employees. Also working on their vending machines, putting healthy options in there, as well as... Does everybody like you over there, Cameron? You're putting the healthy options in there? I mean, sometimes I get, here's the exercise guy, you know? <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> but... It's going well. <laughs> That's cool. So um, how long are you going to be doing that? I will be with them through actually June, and then I'll take a trip down to Peru, but I'll still be consulting uh, remote, and then I come back and finish up the contract until December. Until this year. December. Right. Okay. Now, the last time we talked, you were either going in, wanted to be a pilot in the um, Air Force. Correct. Or you wanted to go to Alaska right. and work on the, be a um, highway patrolman. Correct, or, correct. Yes. Well, I was going to take the test with the Air Force, but right. I had some family matters. Um, unfortunately, my grandmother passed away and some other things. And when this came up, I had a nice offer out in Utah. Right. But the working right here at Fujifilm with those guys right. and actually impacting the community. You know, we got a thousand employees. Right. That they do not have access to the fitness programs because they're nine miles away. Mm -hmm. Imagine working a 12 hour shift and you're so tired, you don't feel like driving to the YMCA. Well, having that available and accessible to them, right? that's changing lives right there in our town. Sure. And it was a great opportunity, I just couldn't pass up. Sure. So, what about, okay, but after this is over, right. um, Will you be going to Alaska, young man? I do not know. <laughs> that is a question I can't answer. Um, I like to think I'm really focused on my energy on breaking this world record. Right. As well as going for improving the wellness program over at Fuji. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, you know, this is, this is very, very interesting, right. Cameron, because I know how you like to get out in the world. Right. Yes. Oh. Well, okay. So you're staying local. I promise I won't be around Greenwood forever, but I've got a trip planned to Peru for three months this three year. Three months. So I'll be out of town for a bit. All right. <laughs> well, um, well we, we, we've got to talk about this burpee thing. Now, does this mean you're going to do a belching record? No, no it's, it's a terrible word. 
if you think about burpee, it's, it sounds something like you should say excuse me after right. each one, right? And right. If I said excuse me 10,000 times, I'd be more worried about my voice than my body. I yes. Feel. But uh, burpee originated from a Turkish general, I believe, after doing research. And what it is, is you drop down, hit the floor, jump back up, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a military maneuver. It's like a, like a, a um, let's see, what do you call this when you drop down like this, put your feet out behind you, right. uh, push up. It's push like, up. almost like a push up. Almost like a push up, and then get up real fast. Well, this happened when he, the Turkish troops, he test his infantry guys because they need to drop down under fire. <laughs> yeah, okay, right? they better and, be fast. Correct. So he had a, he had, if they could do 15 burpees in a set amount of time, I think it was 40 seconds, and they passed the test. Okay. So they had to drop down, get back up. And the general's last name was Burpee, hence how the Burpees Burpee. originated. Okay. All right. Now, fast forward to 2013-2014 uh, here. Right. The, uh, the uh, Guinness World Record of Burpees right. is out there. That's correct. Okay. And uh, is it a girl she that I read? An Australian. That's, That's correct. That's what I thought. Australian. Yeah. 7,684. In how many hours? 24 hours. 24 hours. Yeah. So this is going for the 24 hour record. And so you want to do how many? I'm shooting for 10,000. You wanna... want to really break that record That's and go correct. above. That's correct. It's not 7,685. Right. I will be happy once I hit that number. Right. right. But I will continue to strive and endeavor forward to hit the number that I've set for myself. Because it's 10,000 burpees for $10,000 for the two, you know. Wow. Now, that brings us to our next question, but I think we should save it till we come back, is how is Cameron Dorn going to raise $10,000 doing these burpees, and what are the organizations that benefit from this? That will be the question. So when we come back, we're going to talk more. I've got Cameron Dorn here, always a treasure right here on WCRS, to come by and share with us. His energy and enthusiasm just gets you going. You just, you may just start sending money right in during this show because you'll be so excited about the possibilities of helping Cameron Doran with his goal. Hey, don't you go away. We'll be right back. Oh, that's right. We're right back here. Sharp Facets Gallery. Cameron Dorn, Dorn is with us here. and he is, uh, He's got a great program here. He wants to help two groups, two groups um, be more better. And what two groups are you working with, Cameron? Um, first of all, I believe in making an impact close to home. Uh, I graduated Ware Shoals High, and school's been around since 1926. And just in 2013, when I came back from that last trip you were speaking of, um, they started a cross-country program. Mm -hmm. So that Ware Shoals cross-country team, they did not have the adequate shoes, didn't have the garments so they could see what pace they were running to run a well-timed race. Um, didn't even have running tights that matched because the South Carolina Association of Public Schools for the state championship wouldn't let them wear tights because they had different colors and it didn't look appropriate. Well, they just didn't have the fund and I think that's terrible. That's how this fundraiser came up. Sure. Uh, the other group is a group of, called Seeds of Hope in Peru and those are kids from a small town which I'll be visiting. Um, they're lacking the necess necessary academic materials. You know, so people think, oh, we're stacked against the eight ball and wear shoals. Well, down there in Seeds of Hope, they're just brushing their teeth when they come to school. They need toothbrushes and things to go home with. So making an impact in both places and linking them via pen pals. So wear shoals can practice their Spanish to the kids in Peru, and the kids in Peru can practice their English to wear shoals. What makes you so um, involved in doing this? When you were in, uh, when you went last year, you helped out at an orphanage. You had a friend over there that right. had an orphanage right. in where was it? Thailand. In Thailand. On the Burmese border. And and you just have done some amazing things for a young man that is, let's see, 25, 26, 25, how old? 25. 25. Um, what makes you look at life this way, Cameron? Well, I have awesome parents. Um, <laughs> Hoyt Dorn, yeah. <laughs> Hoyt is uh, head of the American Cancer Society right here, right. yes. And I believe I've been traveling since I was 19 now. And I've traveled pretty extensive, extensively, I like to think. And I saw a vast amount of different um, conditions or situations, right? And one, once something like that is put into your head, you can't really forget about it, you know? And 
I don't have any children of my own. I'm not looking to have children of my own right now. But I believe that you can help the world. <coughs> and um, just start helping those around you, first of all, and inspire others. And just start like a little mini micro movement. And it just feels good. I'm a believer in the whole karma thing. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, I like to sleep well at night. Sure. Well, you know, you were, what, in pharmaceutical sales? Um, supplements, supplements with the deputy. Right. And um, you just one day upped and left that job. Right. Right. Yeah. And we started traveling. Right. That's correct. And you never stopped. Yeah. yeah. This is probably the longest period of time that you've stayed in one place, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Since all this traveling right. thing. I'm a believer if something doesn't feel right, of course, you got to be financially responsible. Um, had the necessary funds saved up, and mm -hmm. you know, for me, I'd rather buy a plane ticket than a new car. So, therefore, that leaves a lot more traveling. <laughs> sure. So, um, you want to help uh, Wear Shoals and this group get uh, their um, cross country, right? Um, why don't they have the money? Why don't they just ask the you know ask ask for more funding? Right. Well, with the funding, it's the district. Um, they're not the most well-funded district in the state, let's just say that. Um, and I, like I said, I graduated with Shoals. I know how much it means to, you can ask for more, but having someone from the area come back, and by all means, they are supporting the calls. Just on Friday, for example, I went up there, spoke to the entire high school district, and I presented the cross-country coach with a check, thanking mm -hmm. her for starting so she could get her some shoes running. Right. right? Well, guess what? They come back at the end of the presentation and they give me a check supporting the fundraiser. So, you know, <laughs> good attracts good, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, right? it does. So they had movie night, con sold concessions, doing everything they can to help out. And for me, putting that little bit of skin in the game, was it a ton of money? No. But you know what? They, they endeavored, they tried, they raised funds. That's all they had to do. I couldn't have been a happier man. Sure. I know one of the things that the Alumni Association is doing, they're um, trying to do uh, what at the old mill, at the, at, this is at the uh, football field, but at the mill part, aren't they trying to redo the second floor or make it handicap accessible? That's what it is. Right, right, for the field house. Yes, for right. the field house. That's a pretty awesome right. project. And it's a beautiful area, you know, I mean, it's right there from Greenwood. Take a 20 minute drive here in Ware Shoals, check out the stadium. That's where they filmed Leatherheads. Yep. George Clooney's been through there. Yeah. There's so much history. It is. it is. It is. And when you're there, you feel like you're back in the 30s and 40s because it, that is the era that it's from. Correct. Yeah. And one thing that makes me happy is that school's been around since 1926. My grandmother graduated from there. My mother graduated from there. And that school still looks better. <laughs> It'll put any school built in 2005 to shame. Well, there you go there, everybody. There's a challenge for right. you. Where it shows. Right. So, yeah. But it, but it is awesome, and it is a testament to the fact. And where Shoals has had it very, very tough. You know, when the mill closed there, it uh, literally almost did destroy the people, the people in the town, because they were so accustomed to having things taken care of there. Right. And it's been a long road for them to get back to where they've gotten so far. And that has a lot to do with education and, and helping the community. I was very impressed to see that uh, the superintendent of schools, Faye Sprouse, didn't ask the county for any more money for their district. She just wants them to push some more jobs over there to that side of the district of, of, of the county. Right. I think by doing that, too, I always go back to skin in the game. You know, If you're not supporting it, like with where Shoals giving me that check, them, they're raising funds, but mm -hmm. giving it to me, and it's coming back full circle to them to get shoes, but they are still endeavoring and trying themselves to make that motion. Because if you're used to getting handouts, well, mm -hmm. guess what? You're going to keep getting handouts and keep wanting handouts. Sure. But if you're working for something, you're earning something. Sure. So this is what the uh, Burpee Project is about. Now, the um, how many kids are actually in the cross country program over there in Ware Shoals? Well, they're off season right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the first year we had about twelve kids. I think it was total. Uh, shoot for fifteen next year. That's what next we're year, right? Yep. Okay. And that's male and female. Well, okay. All right. And how did they do with the twelve students last they year? They did well. Uh, went to a meet to close out the season. One of the kids, first runner, beat everyone at Lawrence High School. 
So you got Ware Shoals, right? And an eighth grader actually, and he's won the entire competition. So they're doing well. You know, that's kind of in the Olympics, though. I mean, you know, when you see some of the runners that have come out of Africa and run barefoot right. and everything, I mean, it has been phenomenal what they've done with nothing. Yeah, exactly. You uh, you can't race again. If you got a good heart, yeah. you know, it's and you think it's uh, more or less, there's no second place. I want this for me. I want this for Ware Shoals. Right. Well, you got somebody that's driven. And this kid was in eighth grade, and he won the entire competition against mm -hmm. seniors. Well, it, you know, you got to look at that uh, coming up. Then he, he, this person could be awesome as as their cross country team grows. And we gave him the right shoes. He gave him the right, right shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is true. So you're going to be trying to do ten thousand burpees. Now I need to know on the practicing so far. How is this coming? What's the most amount of burpees you've done in us? prescribed amount 3, of time. 3,303 um, in four and a half hours. Four hours and 34 minutes, actually. 3,300 right. in four hours. Four and a half. Four and a half. So that's what, about 900? I'm just doing this roughly in my uh, brain. Like 730, 740 per hour. Uh, per hour. Okay. So how are you feeling uh, about this going for the 10,000? You know, it's not so much physical. Um, I've been doing a lot of athletic events since I was was four years old, right? You come to that point where you just turn the mind off, and uh, you turn you turn the mind on. Turn the mind on. <laughs> yeah. Don't I'm, turn it off, Cameron. Don't turn it off, uh, and then just let the body follow. If you're thinking about, oh, I'm tired of this, that, and the other, uh, use the word. There's an old movie for the love of the game. Yep. Uh, baseball is not my forte by any means because I like to move. Well, that's a lot of standing around. Well, the pitcher says in that Kevin Costner, he says, clear the mechanism. And that really resonated with me. Same goes for a 112-mile bike ride. Same goes for doing burpees for a day. Clear the mechanism. Think of the body as a machine. And push it. And keep pushing it. <laughs> now, how, how do you see this breaking out? Because you've got 24 hours Correct. to do 10, uh, 10 10,000 right. burpees. How do you see this with the time frame here? Well, every day I'm thinking strategy, of course. You know, I, the amount of times I'm like, hey, should I do it like this or do it like that? Um, it's going to be all heart rate based, uh, making sure I'm utilizing fats and carbohydrates with mm -hmm. the necessary fueling. Uh, of course, I'll start at 4 p.m. on May the 16th. Okay. Um, that's taking advantage of my body's biological clock, per se. I love to work out in the afternoon. Now, right now, I'm full of energy. I can't wait to get out of here. I love speaking with you, but I can't wait to get out of here and knock out some lunches. Well, we'll let you do some burpees right here on the show if it make you feel better right, there, right. Cameron. <laughs> but um, 4 p.m., and I'm really going to watch the heart rate, and I'm going to run the for about six hours. Six hours. Six and maybe eight from around there, seeing how we feel, and try to get out ahead of the game. Okay. Then after that, there'll be a lot of backwards math going on, how many I need to knock out per minute, and a lot of fuel. And you can expect to burn about 30,000 calories for this entire 30,000 calories? That's correct. That's almost 10 pounds. <laughs> 10 pounds? Right. Are you bulking up any before you do I this? I am. I am. I am. <laughs> Your legs are shaking here. You're so <laughs> anticipating right. this whole thing right. there, Cameron. <laughs> Talking about them gets me tired sometimes. So, yeah. you know. so you're going to... Um, Front load front load this you're going so do you get and are you going to sleep any during this 24 hour period to be determined you know we'll all play it there's no way we're walking in touch into such an unknown here right such an unknown really this yeah. is the cameron dorn special <laughs> into the unknown right. with the suitcase right right and when you walk into the unknown i say that you you only answer questions that you didn't even know were there in the first place right okay <laughs> All right. When we come back, we'll have more to talk about. Hey, you can give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Are you a burpee expert? Can you help us with these problems? Hey, don't you go away. We'll be right back. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 
72 Bypass, and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Oh, that's right. We're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery. Gracie has been up giving a few kisses out there, trying to get a little love from Cameron here this afternoon. And uh, Cameron, so uh, you've got this. Uh, now, where are you going to try to break the record at? What is the physical location? Right here in Greenwood. Right here in Greenwood. At the sweat box. Well, that's an appropriate place. That's right. Ruthie Graham. That's correct. Yeah. Uh -huh. When the challenge started up, I put a little thing up on Facebook. Hey, I'm going to go for this record. Use this fundraiser. Yes. Our fundraiser. Ruthie shot me a message right away. She's like, let's do it at sweat box. Well. Done. That, that is great. Now, Ruthie's moved over there uh, right behind the uh, where Sports Breaks was. There were some businesses right, right there. How you doing, Ruthie? I hope you're listening this afternoon. <laughs> she, uh, the sweat box is the perfect location for this. Right. <laughs> it really is. I love the name. Yeah. So this is actually going to be almost like an event. Now, when is this going to be? May 16th. Um, it's a Friday. Starting at 4 p.m. And then running 24, 24 hours. Culminating at 4 p.m. on Saturday, May the 17th. Now, what do you think? Do you think you can do 10,000 burpees before 24 hours passes? That is the goal, you know. That is the. I wouldn't um, try to do something I didn't believe that I could complete. For right. Example. Um, I'm and, not putting any 100% guarantees out there right. because the burpee is known as the hardest full body exercise, and that literally is a day of doing the hardest full body exercise. Um, some people do 10 and they hate, they're starting to hate life, right? Right. Well, 10,000 is a little different. <laughs> All right, but you also have somebody working with you. Uh, one of your friend trainers has come into town to, uh, you've been doing some right. strategy. Correct. Um, still under Team Katoof, still race for those guys. He gave me some workouts. Um, also, now I'm just I'm such a bank of experiences from doing crazy endurance events and things. Yes. Um, the so, last years of my life is just drawn from that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cameron, and you're still young enough to do it, 25, so I can still see this happening, right? right? right. Yeah, you're, you're not in that 40-plus age group right. where you're trying to, to re remain youthful. You right. still are youthful yeah, here. I think when I get 40-something, I'll still be fine in the way. Probably. <laughs> probably. All right, so you are going to have now, you were saying something. There's, you're going to have food. What, Howard's That's is, correct. is, is going to yeah. make sure you have good food? Yeah, and that will be food that night for people dropping by. Um, also, the Mill House, they've come on board as a sponsor, and they're going to be dropping some pizza by for me to eat, which will be awesome. Yes. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so you're going to have the protein pizza? Uh, yes. I, Carbohydrate pizza you know, here. It's yes. going to be whatever they want to bring me because I'm going to eat it. Uh -huh. And then the <laughs> Subway of Lake Greenwood is donating a six foot long sub with some cookies. And that will be with plenty of water. So there's some. it's been pretty awesome with the local businesses getting behind us. That's right. And then, of course, you've got some um, other sponsors. You want to tell us who, who else correct. is on board for uh, sponsorship? The title sponsor, this guy, Anthony with Superior Roofing. Uh, He's on top of it. Right. There he you is. go. He's been on top of it since, I mean, since I started racing triathlons about seven, eight years ago. He right. was one of my first sponsors. Right. Stayed with me until this day. Uh, proud to have him on board. Also, Lander University, where I graduated from college, um, they came on board, and they're a sponsor. Rush heating and cooling. Right. So. How about Fuji? Fuji is not a sponsor as of yet. As of okay. yet. Well, let's put them on notice here today. <laughs> <laughs> Fuji, you've got your awesome trainer here, your corporate wellness person. You need to get behind this and sponsor this, right? right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but you've got a good group working with you, good Sorry. group helping you out. Right. And uh, let's hope that uh, some more people would like to be on board. Now, if somebody does want to be a sponsor, um, how do they uh, contact you? What do they do? Right. To contact me, I do a website. Um, explains the whole story. I'd love for people to take a take a look over. It probably takes about two to three minutes to read it most. It's www.gofundme.com mm -hmm. backslash burpee world record. Burpee World Records. Burpee World Records. Okay, and that is a site that a lot of people use for funding and whatnot. That's correct. It's an easy way, it's accessible. I had some friends donate from all over the world, um, and it just compiles all the donations in one box rather than, say, picking up donations here. Right. Or there. The Observer also, and Wear Shoals, if you want to drop checks by. Yes, or any fun they're helping. Yes. They're helping. So. Sure. So um, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun, and to go for a world record, a Guinness world record, right here from Greenwood, that's pretty huge. Right. 
I don't think we've had a lot of people to, do that, have we? There is no South Carolinian. No that South Carolinian has ever held a Guinness World Record of athletic achievement. Oh my God! Ever. Ever. There's only one world record in the history of South Carolina that's held by an individual, and that's for the world's hottest pepper. That's okay. It. That's it. That's it. Cameron. This is a lot of pressure on you, bro. Right, that's all right. That's I'm all telling right. you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got the burpee. We know the history of the burpee. You want to raise ten thousand dollars. Now, how does this work? How do, how is the money coming together for this camera? Just the, out of curiosity. The money's coming together now. We're about seventy percent of goal. Okay. Um, it's really good because we've only been doing it two months. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you think seven thousand dollars for the area? That's fantastic, but that's still three thousand dollars away from where we want to be. Okay. So. So you need some people to come on board here right, and right. and help out. Now they can they can. Are you doing it by the burp? What's that? By the burp, does people contribute for X amount of burpees? Or <coughs> crazy. That night there will be an option available. An option available. Like for donations and um, hey, number of burpees in thirty minutes or so. Okay. But right now it's just a donation. You get a shout out. Say if you give. Um, and we're doing a live stream. Mm -hmm. Say, oh, thank you for donating twenty-five dollars. So you'll be in a shout out on the live stream of the burpees. Okay. And I guess you're going to have somebody doing this, or are you going to be doing the shout outs and doing the burpees? No, this might, is what I want to know. I might give a few shout outs, but I have some friends there that will be taking care of that for me. Okay. All right. That sounds cool. Hey, I tell you what, we got to hear a quick word from our sponsors. I got to find out what Gracie. Uh, I think Gracie wants to do burpees with you. That may be it. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back. Don't you go away. Oh, oh that's right. We're right back here, Sharp Passes Gallery. <clears throat> we are talking with Cameron Doran this afternoon. Now, when you go to Peru, you're going to be going, when do you leave to go there? June 16th. June 16th. That's a month after the burpee record. That's correct, right. My body's in one piece. So. <laughs> that's right. <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> The burpee record, and there is nobody that's ever in South Carolina except for the hot pepper guy. That's correct, and I proved um, Fox News came down and done a story on it, and yeah. sure enough, the reporter, she looked it up for me, confirmed it, yeah, that's it. Well, this is sad. This is sad that there is nothing else for South Carolina here. I see it as an opportunity. It is an you opportunity. Know? I really do. Yes. And why not, if, if I'm lucky enough uh, to get one record, right. this won't be the last one. Wow. Okay, I had no idea that South Carolina did not have any, any records on this. So, uh, you are going to make it down to Peru a month after, and what will you be doing? Will you take a check down there? Is right. that what your idea is? Right. And then, down, I've been in contact with Seeds of Hope, the school down in Peru and Juarez. Um, schools at 10,000 feet elevation, you know, right there in the cradle of the mountains. And they've sent me about a list of seven different things that they're in need of. Okay. But part of me, um, I've worked with NGOs in the past, I really want to go down and get the feel for it and base it upon the need, right? the exact need of the area. And in the, the kids in Peru, mm -hmm. there's 50 kids in Peru, right? 15 kids in Wear Shoals, right? right. But per, um, American dollars go a little bit further in Peru. So, so we'll are you going to be down there? Are you going to help out with the school? or Right. I'd like to volunteer some, which I've already talked to. Um, that will be at various times in between climbing. Um, down in Peru, which is... Uh, wait a minute. What are you going down there to climb? Let's screw. Uh, we're going down to climb in La Corda Blanca, which is the world's Just highest tropical mountain range. Um, high alpine mountains. 20,000 foot mountains. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know it's not the same. Mount Everest, they just had this, the Sherpas, and right, they've had a, some... That's a terrible, terrible thing there. Yeah, that's terrible. I, they were at 20,000 feet and avalanche happened. Uh, those are the nicest people. Favorite country in the world, Nepal. Uh, you can't meet better people. They're just trying to make a living. Uh, they're up there. They know the mountain well, but you can't predict what's going to happen. There's no challenge like mountain climbing, and I think that's why it draws people to it. There's no challenge like mountain climbing. Right. <clears throat> so what are the type of things that could happen with the tropical end of this? Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> All good things, you know. <laughs> you want to make sure that you know your situation. Um, you're uber careful with every step you take, um, use the necessary precautions, and you literally just hope for the best. But I've promised myself I'm not going to lead a life where I just sit and watch TV and I enjoy living it. <laughs>
So you are going by yourself? You taking somebody uh, with you? What's no, I'll be mean? going down there with a friend of mine named Ken Dennison, a uh, climbing partner I met in New Zealand, as well as my friend that just came into town over the weekend, Andrew Becker, um, and he's going to come down there. For this month. Okay. So the three of you are going to climb these 20,000? Right. Two of us, um, Andrew's not as experienced in the mountains as Ken. Um, Ken's actually summited Kilimanjaro, Aconcagua, two of the highest peaks in the world, one, one in Africa, another in South America, and climbed in these mountains before. So he has beta. Uh, he will be the climb leader. Uh, I've got a lot of homework. You know, I'm still studying. I'm 25. I finished my master's, but I'm still opening up mountaineering, freedom of the hills, and practicing tied knots. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the learning never ends. <laughs> For the safety precautions. Yeah. So, how long are you, will you be down in Peru? 100 days. 100 days. If not in Peru, in the surrounding area, okay. Bolivia. Have you been down there before? I have never been to Peru, first time. Okay. So, this will be another one of those experiences right. for you. Certainly, certainly. I know when you went to, was it in Nepal, we talked about staying in some of the hotels and how cheap it was, right. and you just had a phenomenal time. Certainly. I cannot, part of me when I was about to do this fundraiser, um, it was going to actually, I was looking at Nepal to raise funds, but then my climate partner, Ken, uh, he's actually been to the school down in Seeds of Hope, and that's how it came all about. Uh, when you climb in Nepal, you can spend a lot, uh, I mean, a ton of money to climb one peak, right? Mm -hmm. Well, down in Peru, you can spend the same amount of money and climb multiple peaks. So it was better for the budget. A uh, plane ticket to Peru is a little bit cheaper than heading back to Nepal at the moment. And why not see a new area? So sure. That's how it came about. But um, but you just had a you had a great time when you were in right. in there. And you know you talked about riding uh, riding the buses and your head hitting the top of the bus. Right. That you found a little dent, indentation that allowed you to stand up straight huh. on the bus. You're so right. I mean, when going back. To your um, the cost of the hotels, staying for two dollars per night in downtown Kathmandu and having fresh squeezed juice that came in from Chitwan National Forest, where there's one horned rhinoceros and tigers, that's life. That's amazing. Uh, so, what are you expecting when you go to Peru? Uh, Peru, as in expecting like condition-wise, living conditions, or what are you expecting? What are you what are you hoping to see or do besides the school? I know you plan to spend time right, at the school um, from. Uh, from a food side of you, the uh, Peru's well known. The Peruvian cuisine is great, so I'm looking forward to experiencing that. Um, also, climb. That's the reason I'm going down there to volunteer and to climb. Um, there'll be side trips to Machu Picchu. I'm also going to hit the Amazon in the northwest or northeast corner. Yeah. Um, just experience the area. <laughs> now the Amazon. Now that's a tricky place. Right. Now. Right. Um, the whole that will be a three to five day little. <clears throat> side adventure. Well, the Pichu, isn't that the place that they don't want anybody uh, taking any more naked pictures from? Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> I will not be one of those lined up to take a picture. But. <laughs> I am pretty sure that they just have passed a law down there. No more naked right, pictures right, with right. the background on a picture. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll just, report back. Okay. When, when you come back, we'll have to have you on the air to talk about yeah. this. All right. So, this, this is a lot to take on. Right. It really is. Um, I've got it spaced apart. The, the challenge now with the, takes place May 16th and 17th. Um, I'll leave then right after a month later for Peru. Um, so while this is going on, I'm trying to get the word out there to raise funds. At the same time, I'm planning for a full-on expedition to the world's highest tropical mountain range. I mean, literally you're talking about some of the highest mountains in the world. That's not to be taken lightly. Now what so, about the oxygen levels and everything here now? Um, about half of what you and I are breathing right now, actually. Okay. That's it. Okay. And this water here that yes. we're drinking so, you know, right. so easy to open up the bottle and drink from, well, we'll have to melt snow, which can sometimes take up to 30, 45 minutes. <laughs> Because it might be negative 10 degrees outside with a 20 degree wind chill or 20 mile an hour wind. I mean, we're talking about this is June. Right. right. And that's the perfect time for climbing. Perfect time. Right. right. Okay. Now, is this a place, since I'm not really familiar, will there be a lot of people climbing at this time? or? There will. 
um, relative. You know, a lot of people might mean what you see at a Greenwood 5K, right, for example. Right, right, but I mean, it is the time when other people will be doing this activity. Correct, correct. So we'll see about 20 to 30, you know, people on the mountain at a time. And depending on which route we take, there might be no one on the mountain that day. So it's nothing better than that. So will you be spending the nights on the mountain? We will. <laughs> okay. How's your mom and dad feeling about this? No, camera? they're totally cool. <laughs> they're uh, totally cool. <laughs> you know, my dad, it, we have such a close relationship. Um, if I'm 4,000 miles away, I like to think our relationship's actually closer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we, we just check in when need be. You know, I like to think when you're further apart from family, those r conversations really matter. Um, you can live side by side with your parents all your life, but you don't have those meaningful conversations. It's like before you fall off the mountain, son, there's something I want to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we won't be falling off any mountain. No. We'll, we'll take it. We'll okay. I just thought I'd bring that up. Yeah. I mean, you know, it has to cross one's mind. Right. Yes. And I think as long as um, you're taking risks, but they're calculated risks. You know, and you, you do the research beforehand. You just don't show up to the mountain wearing a bicycle helmet and some put some screws in your shoe and think you're going to get to the top. Yeah. Which, by the way, people have done before. <laughs> So, uh, so while experience helps from your past type of type of things that you've done, it's going to be a new experience. Correct. For every mountain, every time you go up a mountain, it's a different thing. The mountains constantly change, right? At the top, um, seracs fall apart; they fall down. Uh, the weather patterns change. That's the beauty of it. That's the draw. That's the draw. <laughs> That's the draw. That's where your adrenaline really starts right. running. Wow. Not so much adrenaline, just. Ah, uh, just I get a really good <laughs> warm fuzzies, we'll call it that. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. All right, so if you want to help Cameron Dorn and the Suitcase of Courage and help out with his program that he is going to do 10,000 burpees, and you know what, there is no doubt in my mind that you will do 10,000 because you are such a motivated guy from the get-go. That's right, I've, I've totally committed my mind to it once I... Put it to paper, um, and I think it was early February when this originated. Then I was like, "Look, you're not going to put this out there and fail. If I do, fail, there's no hundred percent guarantee. Sure, but it will be a failure of the body. The um, failure of the body. <laughs> like, the mind will still be doing the, burpees, yeah. even though the body may fail. Right, right. <laughs> but you never. There's a quote, uh, Theodore Roosevelt. It's quite lengthy, but to summarize, um, the credit belongs to the man in the arena. It's not the critic who counts, not the, the doer of the deeds where he went wrong, right? right. To the man t whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, right? So either he knows high triumphant or defeat, but his place will never be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. And That's it, a great one. And it's fantastic, you know? You never know until you go. Put yourself and you out never there until you try. Right. That's right. So if you don't try, you'll never find out whether you could have done it. Right. This is why it's totally amazing. Have we checked out if there you know, because I'm really intrigued by this idea that we have no no World Guinness record holders in South Carolina. Right. Have we had people try? This is my question. Do we know this? Well, I've extensive Google research, of course, yes. right? Google. Um, we ha I don't know if we have people there's nothing listed. There's nothing listed. There's nothing and and that's the part of it. It's like I Why not bring this. it here, right? right? We are all capable of something. You look at Guinness, right? right. There's crazy records for everything. I right. just happened to hit, pick the hardest full body exercise, <laughs> right? I don't know why still. Yeah, but I was you drawn You sat it, in a rocking right? chair and rocked for X amount of hours. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yeah. But why not go after it, right? Yeah. And it's like once you achieve something like this, and you can use this in your term, it's all relative, right? right. Once you achieve something, then you kind of look at something else, you're like, oh, that wasn't that hard. I can do this. Right. Gain momentum from the mountain. Right. <laughs> Gain momentum from the mountain. Gain momentum from doing ten thousand burpees and see where that takes you. Right. Well, we are uh, we are very impressed, Cameron, and I really think it's terrific that you want to give back to the community and you're helping the your uh, your uh, school over there in Ware Shoals right. and, and helping the school down there in Peru. That is uh, that's pretty awesome. Right. Well, thank you, Anna. That's kind of good. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean it. I think that uh, people don't realize, and a lot of people don't realize the things they could do if they just put their mind to it. Right. And that's where what you're doing is going to make a difference to uh, the community. Right. I think it's already a success. 
in my opinion, because we've already raised 7000 I want to get to 10000 right. Then it will be ultimate success. Right. Well, by putting myself out there, this funds, if I would have never put myself out there in the first place. You never would have raised nothing. Exactly. And those kids in both areas are going to benefit from this. Sure. Right? And if I walk away and I, for some reason I only knocked out 5,555 burpees, well, you know what? And I can close my eyes that night and go to sleep and say, I endeavored and I gave it everything I can. Well, guess what? I learned something new. I pushed my body. Why not? I inspired others. Like, for example, um, Greenwood Calendar. You right. know Greenwood Calendar? Right. So after speaking with Where Shoals Friday, I get a call. Um, the mayor and I actually done a burpee together. It's right. getting people active all over the place. They're asking, what is a burpee? That's right. I mean. <laughs> so, we've, so we've got the mayor doing a burpee too, right. right on the calendar? The mayor. we got to check this out. Check it out. It's probably coming out today or tomorrow. But right. he, he knocked out a burpee. He knocked out a burpee. Right. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood reporting on the fact that Mayor Wilburn Adams did a burpee and it's going to be on the calendar, Greenwood calendar. Hey, uh, Cameron, again, where do people go if they want to find out more about this? Uh, please, huh? Check out www.gofundme.com right. backslash burpee world record. Well, there you go. Cameron, right. all the Cameron. best, and uh, we'll be watching to see how this goes. It is going to be streamed That's live correct. That's correct. right there on Greenwood Calendar. So there you go. There's another uh, good thing happening. And, of course, if you want to go by and have some good food and watch Cameron knock it out, you can go by the sweat box starting at 4 p.m. on May 16th of this year, folks. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, Cameron. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.